this chapter, we're going to study logic and reasoning. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the recreational aspect of mathematics, looking at puzzles and games. Okay, hi everybody. So now in this lesson, we're going to look at puzzles and games. So we're going to try to apply some of the logic and reasoning skills that we've got to, to go through uh, puzzles and games. And really, it's, it's more going to be about deductive reasoning. So we'll take a look at a handful of problems here. So what do we got here? In a magic square, the numbers in each row and column and diagonal have the same sum. The numbers range from 1 to the number of squares available, and these numbers cannot repeat. Okay, so you've probably seen something like this before. So let's look at the smaller one here. So when I add up 7, 5, and 3, going along this, this column here, I'm going to get a uh, value of 15. Okay? Now from there, I can use that to kind of fill in the rest of it, because I know that the diagonal must also add up to 15. So 4 and 5 is 9, and 6 is 15 just like 4 and 3 is 7, and 8 is 15. 6 and 8 is 14, and 1 is 15. Now that gives me the 1 and a 5 there, so I'm a little iffy about that, but 1 and 5 is going to be 6 plus 9 is 15. Uh, 7 and 6 is 13, plus 2 is 15. Now all I have to do is verify that this is equal to 15, and 2 and 9 and 4 are in fact 15. So that's it. That's the solution that we were looking for. Now let's take a look at this one over here. Uh, now, when you add up the one only row that you've got here, you're going to get 34. Okay, if you add up 5, 14, 12, and 3, you're going to get 34. Now I've got an, an incomplete uh, column right here. So 34 minus 6 minus 12 minus 1, that is going to get me 15. So I know for sure that that's got to be 15. Now from here, I don't actually have a group of four in any row or column. So <clears throat> what I gotta do here is I gotta make a bit of a guess. Now the fact that I've got a one here and a 15, so we're at both ends of the, the spectrum here, uh, but that, so I, I put together a one and a 15, but that suggests to me that in this row right here, I'm probably going to have a 16. Okay, because I'm, I'm going to want to pair up a really small number with a really big number. Now, that can go one of two places. Let's just throw the 16 here. And the reason I'm going to throw it here instead of over here is because I see that 13 there. Uh, I'm just going to guess that the, I'm going to put the 16 with the 5. I'm just, just kind of throwing that out here. Now, what else have we got if we do that? Um, let's see. I've got the, the 16 and the Okay, I've got the 13, the 3. That's going to be 16. Um, what have I got out here right now? I've got a, a 16, a 15, a 14, 13, 12. Uh, okay, well, let's try putting on an 11 here. So if I put an 11 there, I can use that to figure out what this is. So 34 minus 16, I've just got my calculator here, minus 1 minus 11 is going to be 6. Okay, hold on. No, I've already got a 6 in there, so that can't be right, which means that 11 can't be right. So let's try, I don't know, let's make it 10. Again, let's see if we can find this number right here. So it's going to be 34 minus 16 minus 1 minus 10. And no big surprise here, that because I made this one one smaller, it's going to get one bigger, that's going to be 7. Okay, well, let's keep going here. So if that's the truth, if that's the case here, then going down here, um, 34 minus 13 minus 3 minus 10 uh, is going to be 8. Okay, uh, I can go up as well. 34 minus 14 is going to be 20. Minus 7 minus 9, that's 16, so minus, that's going to be 4 there. Okay, uh, going across here, 34 minus 13 minus 6 minus 4, that's minus 10. Uh, minus uh, 13 is going to make this 11. And then I can go down this way here, 34 minus 11 minus 5 minus 16, and that's going to give me a 2 left over. Now I just got to double check here, does this make 2 when I go this way? So, well, 2 and 8 is 10, uh, 9 and 15 is 24, together that's 34. So, yeah, yeah, that's how I would fill in that particular magic square. Okay, so here on, this one's called cross sums, it's also called uh, Kikuro. So we're going to use the numbers 1 to 9 to fill in each white cell in here, but we're going to give some clues as to the sums um, that you're seeing here. So, for example, when you see the line here in the 7 at the bottom, that means the sum of the two numbers this way are going to add up to 7. Okay, this is going to add up to 14, but when it's like this, it's this way, okay? So, 
I mean, now some, some obvious things here. I know that if this is a 7 and this is 4, this has got to be 3. It can't be really anything else there. It's got to be 3. Uh, let's keep going here. Um, this is 13. So I know that these two here have to add up to 3. So this has got to be 7. This is a 12. This is an 8. This has got to be 4. This is 24. So 24 minus 7 minus 8 minus 3. The, 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 that's got to be 6. Uh, 21 minus 6 minus 4 minus 9. That has got to be 2. Uh, right here, this is going to be 22 minus 4 and 6. That's 10 minus 9. That's going to be 3. Uh, then I've got that 7 popping up again, which means this has got to be 4. Uh, these coming across here, 4 and 2 is 6 and then 9. So get 14, it's got to be 5. Oh, now look at this. I've got a couple unknowns here. Now, let's take a look at this. 14 minus 5 minus 4 is going to be 5. So I know that these two numbers here have to add up to 5. Okay, well, it could be, uh, let's say it could be 1, oh, no. I was going to say it could be 1 and 4, but I can't do 4 because I can't have the same number showing up uh, twice in a, a row or a call, or in a, what they say, they're in a clue, in an entry here. So it's got to be 2 and 3. Uh, but if I put a 3 here, then I got 2 showing up in a, in a row there, and that's no good. So it's got to be 3 and 2. That's it. Those are my only two options there. And that's how we'd fill that one in. So let's go over here, where there is no real lead into this. Uh, we just got to start kind of guessing here. So, okay, well, what have we got here? Um, 8. These two numbers here have to add up to 8. Uh, well, okay, can't be 4 and 4, so it's either got to be like 5 and 3, uh, 6 and 2, 7 and 1. Uh, let's try let's try 7 and 1 here. Um, okay, let's, let's try 7 and 1. Uh, and I'm putting the big number up here with the, the 15, and the smaller number here with the 10. I'm hoping that that works here. So now going across this way, if that's true, then this has to be 8. Uh, here, this has got to add up to 24, this has got to add up to 10, uh, okay, well, hey, 10, 10 could be, oh, I was about to put 9 and 1, but I can't put 9 and 1 here, um, so it's got to be, let's say, 8 and 2, but there's an 8 there, so let's say we could put 2 here, so 2 and 8, let's see if that works. So going down here, 24 minus 8 minus 2, well, it's going to be 14, Okay, well, no, that doesn't work because the numbers here are supposed to be numbers, uh, the digits from 1 to 9. So that doesn't work. Uh, okay, let's try, what do we got here? What other options here? 7 and 2. Um, well, in this case here, we could put the 7 here and the 2 here and see how that works. So 8 and 7 is going to be 15. That means this could be 9. Okay, that, that works here. Let's see what happens here. Um, this is 10. That's good. So this has got to be 19. That's kind of a small number here. Uh, this has also got to be 19. Okay, so what are our options here? So if I take 9 away, so I know that these two have to add up to 10. Oh, and I'm going to want the smaller number here because the, I want these to add up to 9, the two numbers here. So these are going to add up to 10 here. Ah, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, so what am I going to do here? Not, well, it can't be 9 and 1 because I've got a 9 there. So again, it could be 8 and 2. Uh, if it is 8 and 2, I can't put the 2 here. i got to put the 8 here. Let's see if that works. Um, so 19 minus 2 and 8 is going to be 9. Okay, well, that works. Now, as long as this works uh, both directions for this one, we've done it right here. So 9 minus 2 is 7. And there we go. 9 and 7 is 16. So that works. Okay, everybody. Uh, here's a Sudoku. And I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Sudoku here. Uh, remember, you got to fill in the digits 1 to 9. In the squares, uh, every row has got to have all the digits 1 to 9. Every column has the digits 1 to 9. And then every group of 3, uh, 3 by 3, so every group of 9 squares right here have to have the numbers 1 to 9 in it. Now, these can get really hard. Okay, These can get really, really hard. Uh, but often, uh, and so often when they get really hard like that, it's just going to be guessing that you got to do to start off with and then eliminate your guesses as they don't work. Um, for the most part, though, all we're really doing is something like this. I'll just walk you through how I would approach this. I've got a 9 in this row. I've got a 9 in this row. I need a 9 in this row, but it, it because the 9 shows up here, it can't be here. 
It can't be in this group of three, so it's got to be in this group of three and in this row. So this has got to be the nine right there. That's where they overlap. Okay. Uh, what else could I do here? Um, I am looking for... Oh, let's pick another one that's that's nice to work with. They see there's six. There's the six is there. Ah, here's an eight here. There's an eight down here, which means there has to be an eight in this middle row over here. Okay, and that's got to be in the middle column there. That's got to be an eight. Oh, what else have we got? Okay, we got a seven here. We've got a seven here, which means we have to have a seven up here in one of these two. Uh, there's a seven there. Okay, so it could go here or it could go here. So right now, that's not enough information to really tell. So uh, let's take a look. Well, okay, we've got sevens here. There's a seven here. There's a seven here. So there's got to be a seven here. It's got to be in one of these two. But there's a seven here, so it can't be in this one. So the seven's got to be in this one. And now, actually, that means that I can't use a seven up here for this one. So we'd already established that I need a seven here or here, and I can't put, put it here, so it's got to go here. Oh, and then look at this. I've got every number in here except for one. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Good. Uh, what else can we do here? Um, okay, down here I've got a seven here. I've got a seven here, which means I need a seven in this, this row. Uh, and it's got to go in this middle section here. It's got to go right there. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, the fives are all taken into account here. Uh, let's go vertically with the fives. Uh, I've got a five in this one. I've got a five in this one. So I need a five in the middle. In the middle. Well, it can't go there. Oh, sorry. I do have a five in the middle. Sorry. I need a five up here is what I need. So I need. I don't need a five here. I don't need a five here. I need a five in this center one. Ah, but I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I'm missing some information. Okay, let's keep going. Um, let's look at the ones. I've got a one in this row. I've got a one in this row, which means I need a one here or here. But there is a one in this uh, column, so there's got to be a one there. Okay, actually, that helps us out a little bit. Because, oh, no, I'm still missing a little bit of information there. You got to keep looking. Keep looking. Uh, let's take a look at this middle column here. I've got a five here. I've got a five in the far one. I don't have a five in the middle one. So one of these two has got to be a five, but there's a five here, so this has got to be the five. And actually, that means I've got a five here in that row, a five in this row, and so on, which means there must be a five right here. Anyway, I could keep on going through and, and doing this, um, but I tell you what, this is what I'm going to do here. I'm going to pause. Uh, you've kind of heard the way I've been, I've been weeding through this, kind of looking at, at columns and figuring out which one goes where. I'm just going to pause for a second, okay, and then I'll have the rest of it filled in so you can kind of check to see how you did, okay? Okay, now we're going to look at a couple of slightly different logic puzzles. Andrea, Betty, and Carol have red, white, and blue caps, but not necessarily in that order. Only one of these statements is true. Andrea's cap is blue, Betty's cap is not blue, Carol's cap is not red. So what color is each girl's cap? Now, the, the important part here is that only one of those statements is true. So let's go through and just see what happens. Let's say one is true. Okay, if Andrea's cap is blue, okay, look at the second one here. Betty's cap is not blue. Well, if Andrea's cap is blue, then this statement is also true because then Betty's cap is not blue. So number one, being true, doesn't work. That immediately runs into a, a problem because it means, therefore, two is also true. So we don't want that. So let's just take a look at number two. Let's say number two, okay, is the true statement. So if Betty's cap is not blue, okay, then that means it could be, well, it could be red or white, okay. Uh, so let's take a quick look at this. If Betty's cap is not blue, Andrea's cap could be blue, but let's watch this. If we're assuming this is the only one that's true. That means, therefore, Andrea's cap uh, would have to be what color here? Betty's cap is not blue. That means it's going to be red or white. Uh, if it's red or white here, and Andrea's cap is blue, is going to be false. It's got to be something else. Carol's cap is not red. That means Carol has to be red. Okay, 
So Carol is red. Andrea is not blue, which means she's got to be white. Oh, which means Andrea's got to be blue, so th that doesn't work here. Remember, if only the middle one is true, that means these two are false. So Carol's cap has to be red. Betty's is not blue, which means the only color left for that is white, but that means Andrea's is blue, so that doesn't work. So the only way this must work is if three is true. Okay, my handwriting is terrible. If three is true, so if Carol's cap is not red, so we've got Andrea, Betty, Carol here. If Andrea's cap is not red, then it's gonna be either white or blue. If Betty's cap is not blue, if that's now false, that means Betty is blue, which means Andrea has to be white, which means, uh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I did that backwards. Sorry, I'm sorry. Carol's cap is not red, which means it's got to be um, blue or white. Betty's cap is not blue, which means that in reality it is blue because that's the false statement. So that means Carol is white, which means Andrea must be red. And again, that makes that statement false. So that actually works here. If that third statement is, is true and the other two are false, I can find a consistent situation uh, for the coloring of the caps. Okay, everybody. Here's a really uh, popular... Uh, sort of a problem here. If you pick up a, a logic uh, book, you'll see a lot of these sorts of problems here. So let's, I'll show you how you work through them here. Artith, Ben, Cecilia, and Derek each work as a doctor, lawyer, teacher, or farmer. Use the clues to find out who has which job. Okay, so Cecilia is not a teacher or a farmer. So Cecilia is not a teacher or a farmer. Okay, so those are options are out. Artith is either a teacher or a doctor. Art is either a teacher or a doctor, which means she is not a lawyer or a farmer. Derek is not a doctor or a farmer. Okay, and the lawyer is a woman. Okay, well, Ardith and Cecilia are the only two women here. So the lawyer is a woman, but we've already established that Ardith can't be the lawyer which means Cecilia is the lawyer. Now that means that nobody else can be the lawyer. Now if that's the case, that means Derek has to be the teacher, which means nobody else can be the teacher. Okay, oh, sorry, and Cecilia doesn't have the possibility of being the doctor here. Now the farmer, therefore, there's only one opening for that. That means the farmer has to be Ben, which means Ardith is the doctor. So. Whoops, I put another I in there. Ardith is the doctor. Uh, Derek is the teacher. Cecilia is the lawyer. And Ben is the farmer.